think the last time I've actually been creating games with development, I think was 10 years ago? Not sure. But anyways, I like playing chess often against my buddy Kai. And I felt I need a new brain challenge. Thinking about a gaming problem and its logic. So I said to myself, why not make it a video series where you'll watch me creating it step by step, which also implies that you'll be following along all of my weird thought processes. Well, most of it. I'll be certainly cutting the parts out where I'll just be sitting here thinking about a problem without saying a single word. In this first video, we'll be having a look at the base setup and the chessboard itself, because already that one looks a little bit simpler than it actually is. And if you like this video or any of my other videos, please hit the subscribe button because I'm a small creator and that really helps keeping the channel. So thanks for that and let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is to have a look at what will the chessboard look like and what of it you need to represent in your code. A chessboard is made out of eight times eight fields. So in total, 64. Now the horizontal part left to right is described by characters A to H. The vertical part starting with the eight is described by numbers. So for example, this field would be D5. The top left field is a light colored field. The next one is a dark colored field, then a light colored field, a dark colored field, and so on and so forth. But then in the second row, it's mirrored, so it starts with dark and then alternates. And then again in the next row, it starts again with light and so on. In the first two rows, in row 8 and 7, there will be the black pieces starting. In row 1 and 2, there will be the white pieces starting. All right, that's all we need to know now to build our chess field and to also build the code logic behind the chess field. Now let's think what we need to build this chess field visually and what we can forget. Well, for now, it's not yet of interest where the black ones and where the white ones start. We can keep in mind the black ones are 8, 7 and the white ones are 1, 2. But we can also come back to it later. Now, we want to build the chess field. Is it important that there's A to H? No, it isn't. The only thing we need to know, really, is that there's 64 fields. From top left to bottom right. So let's build this in the code. Just so you know, the principles we apply here, you can apply with just plain JavaScript. But React components are really easy to render and since we're adding real time later and we will use some backend, why not use Next.js? So that's what we'll do here. Let's create a project called Real Time Chess. I'll be using TypeScript. We won't need Tailwind here and I just wait. And then first step, let's open up the project and get rid of anything we won't need. So first go to the page, delete everything and only return a component with Hello world. That's it for now. Then we can also delete this CSS file here. And we want our own CSS presets. So let's clean this one up, delete everything, and then add for each element on the page, box sizing, border box, and padding and margin zero. That's the default for a new Next.js project anyway. Let's open up the terminal and run the project. And you can see that it works because we have hello world. All right. Since I always find it more fun when it looks a bit better, I'll be going to uigradients.com. Then I just choose a nice gradient. Yeah, that one's looking good. Grab the last line of the CSS and let's add it to the HTML element. Looking good. Let's add a chessboard now. For that, I'll create a new folder, components, and in that one, chessboard. .tsx. Then let's return a component. For now, it only says I am the chessboard and use that one inside of the page. Works. Now, before we create a chessboard, we want to make sure in the global CSS that everything inside the body is just centered because we also want the chessboard to be centered. So let's say body display flex and then go justify content center 
and align items center as well. But that only works if the body is taking at minimum the viewport height. So min height 100 viewport height. Let's check it. All right, the text is centered, so we can start off with the actual chessboard. Before I do, let me switch up the gradient because I think there's room for improvement. Yeah, perfect. I like that one. The first thing I want to do is to represent the chess board, more specifically the chess fields. It is common practice for games to use object oriented programming. So I'll just create a class here as well. Let's say, let's call it board because the name chess board is already in this file. Now this board should contain a property with the fields. And since we discussed this already, the fields are eight times eight, eight rows with eight columns each. It makes sense to have an array in an array. So an array with eight arrays, each containing eight slots. So that looks like this. For each field or for each slot, I'll be using zero as a value right now. And then I have the first row and I need seven more. And that actually kind of looks like a chess field already. Now for React to render that, we actually need an instance of that board. And since React and since React works with state, we'll be using use state and pass a board with use state and a new board. All right. Now let's start rendering the board. The first thing you want to have is the container. I'll be using one outside container, one inside container, and then the fields. So then the rows and the columns. Let's create an outside container. That only adds a little bit of styles outside of it. Let's start with box shadow, a little bit of blackish shadow. Then comes the inner one, which is giving the size. And I'll be using 800 pixels because that means each field gets 100 pixels in size. Just to be able to check it, I'll also give this one background yellow for now. And let's have a look. It complains because we're using use state and use state is something interactive. So it's meant to be used with front end components. But by default in Next.js, a component is rendered on the server. So we have to add one little thing at the top of this file. We add the string use client, which makes it a client component. All right, there's the board. I think in my case, I can make it a little bit bigger. Let's use 150 pixels per field. That means 1200. So let's adapt it. Yeah, better. Let's get rid of the background yellow. And now let's add the fields. So we use current board. Then we access the fields. And since this is an array, we'll map it to components. So we iterate through it and each row is mapped to a result. We get a row for each iteration and we need to return some render result. And then we're inside of a row and inside of that row, we need to iterate again through the columns. So that will be the actual render result. So let's return board row. And then same thing, map, but this time we get a field and then we return simply an empty diff for now. Now it complains because it wants a unique key. That's because when rendering with iterations, React uses keys to know if it needs to re-render or not. So that's simply a unique key and we can make such a unique key by using just the indexes of our array. So we'll use the row index, which we get in map as a second parameter in the first one and the column index, same thing. And then we just combine those two as a string and we're good to go. So row index underscore column index, and that does it. But if we check it now, we do have the diffs, but they're all full width and zero height. We could give each diff certain styles, but we can also just simply use display grid because display grid is actually naturally what we want because display grid uses columns and rows and a chess board is columns and rows. So display grid is perfect, but I don't like these inline styles here. So let's move them to a CSS file. I'll create a file, chessboard.module.css. 
I'll use chessboard wrapper and chessboard and for the chessboard wrapper I'll use the box shadow and for the chessboard itself I'll use width and height of 1200 you can also just use width and then say aspect ratio 1 same thing let's import those classes now add the wrapper class to the first one and the chessboard class to the second one let's check it let's check it okay still works and now in our css we add display grid and for the columns we say grid template columns is repeat eight fractions so eight times one fraction and the same we use for rows eight times one fraction and that means we just have eight times eight same sized entries so let's have a look we don't have any background colors yet so we have to inspect it and you can see one two three four five six seven eight they have the perfect size and they then wrap awesome so now we need to give them a little bit of color and for that one we have a look again at our visual board we start at the top with light dark light dark and so on and so forth but in the next row we start with dark so it's not alternating that's important because that's confusing because it's dark light dark dark so it's not like dark light dark light because in the next line it starts with dark so for the top line it starts with light and for and for the next one it starts with dark and so on and so forth so we can't just alternate between the fields that doesn't work but yeah still not a big problem let's do it let's already add a class for light field and a dark field right let's just call this one light and dark we can use custom colors later but let's just use white and black I told you just now that depending on the row, it starts with light or dark. So in the first row, which in an array is index 0, it starts with light. In the second row, which is index 1, it starts with dark. 0 is an even number, 1 is odd, 2 is even, 3 is odd. So we can conclude even rows start light. Let's first find out if the row is even or odd because if it's even we want to start light so is it even that's the case when the row index divided by two has a rest of zero the percentage is the mod operator which gives you the rest of the division now we know if it's an even row and if it's an even row then the first field is light so let's define a mutable variable light that's the case when it's even now, since we switch that variable, depending on the row, we can toggle this variable for each field. So then when going through the fields, we can toggle it for the next field. Let's have a look and see what happens. So class name equals, if it is light, then we want classes light, else we want classes dark. And it looks correct, but it is incorrect. It starts with dark, then white. But it should start with white, then dark. And the reason is simple. That's because the first value is correct, but immediately before rendering the first field, we already invert it. But we can't invert it after returning. And that's the problem here. And the simple solution is to simply start with the inverted value, and then it should be the opposite. Yep now it's correct now i don't really like the modern background look with this very strong black and white look so let's adapt this a little bit for the light field i'm using some very light pinkish color with transparency and for the dark ones we can simply go with purple now we have this one and this looks much more friendly and if we adapt the purple a little bit and add transparency it's gonna look even more beautiful awesome all right the first step is done. You have the base setup for the chess field. And now we want to add the chess pieces. 
If you noticed in this video that you were seeing me with glasses, without glasses and with different clothes, that's because I've already recorded multiple parts and not just hours but days have passed and I have to shower and change my stuff from time to time. So yeah, I guess that's relatable. I hope that's relatable. In the next part, we'll be setting up the chess pieces. So the board will be more than just dark and light tiles. If you got questions or want to tell me how bad my code is, then just write it in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe to stay updated with the latest videos. Have a great day, have a great week and be nice to each other.